If you've come in for confession at all during this time, you should be pretty familiar with how Father Ned has his confessional set up here in the entrance of the church. Um, you just walk right on through the door, leaving it open. There should be music playing in the background. You come in, and he will hear your confession here as you stand. Now, you may be wondering, where did Father Christian's confessional go? It's not there anymore, um, which is true. It is not there anymore. Uh, there had been some notes made that people could hear um, just voices from the confessional fairly well. Um, and so we decided to move it. And uh, if you look here, so if I'm hearing confessions, I'll put this board out that says Confessions with Father Christian in the library. Um, and, and so it points you forward and to the right. So you go forward to through the sacristy, making sure to look make sure nobody's there. You don't have to be as creepy about it. Um, you should be safe. Go on through, leaving both doors open. Um, be aware that the light might ah, come on um, because it's an automatic light, but then I'll hear your confessions here. All right, well, welcome everybody to another episode of At Home with the Lord. Um, we'll go ahead and begin with our prayer during this time of pandemic. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Mary, you always brighten our path, a sign of salvation and of hope. Entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, Father, while remaining steadfast in faith. O loving, loving Mother, Mother you, know you know what we need, and we are confident you will provide for us as a canon in Galilee. Intercede for us with your Son, Jesus, the Divine Physician, for those who have fallen ill, for those who are vulnerable, and for those who have died. Intercede also for those charged with protecting the health and safety of others, and for those who are attending to the sick and seeking a cure. Help us, O Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who took upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, so as, so as to lead, lead us through the, the cross to the glory of the resurrection. resurrection. Amen. Amen. Under thy protection, we seek refuge, O Holy Mother of God, in our needs, despise not our petitions. But deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious, blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. All right. So just a short episode for you today. Um, we figured you might be kind of curious about what happened on Friday here. Um, so kind of a, a general outline is uh, Archbishop Gomez from Los Angeles, um, kind of in keeping with what the bishops in Canada were doing as well, um, rededicated, reconsecrated the United States to Mary. Um, so we just figured we'd talk a little bit about, if you're not familiar with kind of the idea of that, um, talk a little bit about that, and then talk about something that we're going to do here as well. Um, and so I don't know if you have any thoughts or, or uh, words of wisdom on consecration to Mary. Uh, well, it's, uh, Louis de Montfort was the one, first one to write a book on this, and so uh, he wrote this book, uh, Consecration or uh, Devo True Devotion, True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And um, I believe uh, Father Gately has come up um, also with a program that kind of takes that, uh, those series of meditations and uh, uses those and then you make a consecration to Mary. I did mine when I was, I don't know, 16, 17 years old, um, way a long time ago. I just did it on my own. Um, but uh, this is something that you can find on Form um, as well. Uh, I believe the meditations or the reflections by Gately are on our formed website that we can use. And um, but what's just to take a step back here? What is a consecration to Mary? What does that? Well, mean? consecration to consecrate is to set aside for something, you know, to set yourself aside for something holy. Um, and so, usually this is only done for religious, but the, you know. We can, we ourselves can dedicate as lay, lay people, not lay person, but clergy. Um, but you can dedicate yourself and, and uh, consecrate yourself to 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 Mary. Um, so, so aren't we aren't we consecrated to God? How do what I mean? What does that mean? How does that work? 
Well, God chose um, the Blessed Virgin Mary through the choice of saving us by becoming man. The act of devotion to, to our, our Lord and the act of our own um, redemption is an act of God's love. So we have to return that love to God. And the, the focal point of all of that is, is Mary. It all comes through, through her. All graces are given through her, uh, whether you like it or not, um, because God chose her. If it wasn't for her um, and what she did, we would never have the grace of Christ dying on the cross for us. So it was by his choice that he chose this instrument um, to, to save us and to, to bring about our salvation. And so Mary, uh, she herself, by her yes to Christ there in the incarnation and her constant yes throughout her whole life, she teaches us how to say yes to God. And this is what we're doing. We're saying yes to God and we're trying to imitate her so that we can get closer to Jesus. Imitate her in her, in her virtues, imitate her in her response to God. So we learn from her. Just like a mother teaches her children, so too but we learn from the mother of God how to love her son, Jesus. And every time you look in the scriptures, what do you see from Mary? Every time you mention, every time Mary is mentioned, she, she is always pointing to Jesus. So this is why we consecrate ourselves to her because she can teach us how to, to truly live as true Christians. Um, she's really the only one that lives as a true Christian. The rest of us, uh, we make a faint attempt at best. Yeah, so we call Mary the perfect model of faith and really the perfect model of the Christian life. Um, and this is why, so we certainly we believe God is God of the living, as Jesus himself says, right? And we believe that Mary is with Christ in heaven, and actually in a special way, um, we do have this belief that she was raised up to heaven body and soul. Now, you know, without going into all that, of course we believe that she has a very special relationship with Christ, her son, right? Um, and this continues in, in heaven as well. And so we know that she is close to her son, very close to her son, and yet very close to us as well. Well, because Christ entrusted her at the, at the cross. So right. he said, behold your son. So he, she's saying that He's, he's saying Jesus is giving her to us as a mother. As yeah. a mother, she's got the bad end of the deal. Unfortunately, it's that poor thing. And so we have this so, this connection. So she has the best son, but then she has us. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, so. Well, we're united to him if we allow ourselves to. So, well, but th this idea is that really we're we're um, consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary, right? Because ultimately, yes, our whole life is being dedicated to God. That is the goal. Um, but kind of one of the things that St. Louis de Montfort really draws out in his writing is that one of the best ways to do that is to go through Mary and to ask Mary to present us to God, right? And to prepare us to, to be given over to God. Um, and so this is a very beautiful way of of kind of living the Christian life to dedicate that to Mary and to ask for her um, to kind of arrange our life in such a way that it is pleasing to her son because she knows the heart of her son better than any other human um, in existence because she is the perfect um, the perfect creation of God the most perfect um, among all humans and but so she responded to that but she, was, right. she used those graces. Right, God it's not that her. she didn't have free will. She, right, so she responded and she, um, so she knows the way. Most of us don't know the way. Most of us think, well, you know, it's pretty common that we could think, well, I can go directly to Jesus. And you can, no, there's no problem go directly to Jesus. But, but uh, if you don't have a sense of humility, uh, how much have you prepared yourself to be received uh, and, 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 to, and to go before God? So by going through Mary, we are making a, a, a minimal act of humility, um, which triggers all graces. You know, obviously the graces are there because of what Christ done for us on the cross and His great act of humility to to accept such suffering for us. But we have to also learn to 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 be humble, and so uh, by asking her, by being taught, by by going to her and say, "How can please teach me how to." to love your son more, and teach me how to be a better Christian, and teach me how to be a better person. 
and then you start to reflect on her life. You start to reflect on her relationship with her with God, and how she responded to that. Then you start to study the the very life of God. You can the, what's the rosary is you you really study the life of of Christ through the through the heart of Mary, and by studying the heart of um, the, the the life of Christ through the heart of Mary, you see all these different nuances of Christ's humility. In Christ's sacrifice, in, in Christ's um, greatness, in all of these things, it is Christ who who who, who breached the great chasm um, of our sin in to order to unite us back to Him. But we too have to learn this. It isn't just a matter of something that's done for us, which it is. But it's also something because we have a free human will. We must engage that free human. will. We must unite ourselves. It isn't just something that God can just give you a blessing and, and, and all is well. What we, we because the, the gift that God has given to us is love, love needs to be reciprocated. There has to be at least some type of minimal act on our part. Otherwise, love is not complete. And that act is done in, in, in an act of freedom. That's why God doesn't force you, uh, doesn't force conversions. He doesn't force you to love Him. You can go on and deceive yourself to think that you'd be better off without loving God. Um, good luck with that. You won't. It's going to happen. You're not going to be happy. You'll never be happy that way. Uh, so Mary can teach us. And Mary can teach us true happiness. Because isn't that humility where you find happiness um, when you're humble? So, and, and, these, and these are some of the things that you learn in this consecration and going through some of these meditations. And going through this uh, consecration and also it's this dedication it keeps you on course you also have her as at your side like a loving mother uh, would so she has a special dedication to you uh, as a wayward child that we are as wayward children as we are she never gives up praying for us she never gives up interceding for us how can she ask one mother that sees a, a wayward son or a wayward daughter. I mean, they're always praying for their daughters. They're always praying for their sons. So too, we as wayward and and, um, and lost children, Mary is always looking for us in Britain and always trying to reintroduce us to to her son. So, so this is all kind of a long introduction to. Um, well, first of all, just to. Uh, kind of to explain what we did on Friday joining into that consecration by consecrating our parishes as well but also to invite you um, and to to let you know that there's going to be more stuff on this soon but we're going to do um, essentially uh, we're, we're going to go through a program for preparing to consecrate ourselves individually to Mary um, so anybody is welcome to join us to do that um, and, and we'll put out materials, obviously, we've talked about a couple of the ways um, you can kind of prepare for that, um, and we'll put out more information on that soon. But the idea is that on June 20th, um, when hopefully we'll, you know, maybe there'll still be some restrictions, but we'll be able to do something then. Um, it's the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and so we'll, we'll consecrate ourselves to Mary that day, have kind of a, hopefully a Mass, and then possibly... Um, offer um, to enroll people in the scapular and so on. So a lot of stuff would be going on, but um, to begin preparing for that 33 days beforehand, that would put us at 18 May. Um, and so I'll be preparing kind of a, a booklet. Certainly you can follow along just by going through, if you have Father Gately's book, 33 Days to Morning Glory, or if you want to pick that up, and that's um, the videos for that are on Formed. Um, or you can always just follow through with um, the true devotion to Mary from Louis de Montfort itself. Um, and so I'll, I'll give some information on how to do that. So um, this is going to be an opportunity that's out there. It'll start 18 May. Um, it will involve, you know, prayer and reflection each day leading up to that. So it'll be somewhat of a commitment. But I think it'll be something good for our parishes. Um, and this is where um, I'll show you a little clip of kind of what I'm doing here, but we'll also have um, kind of a, a, an Immaculate Heart of Mary in which we'll place the names of all of our parishioners, um, which will hang from um, the statue of Mary, Help of Christians that we have here.
And so we're just introducing that idea, throwing it out there, um, so you can start thinking about joining us for that, and there will be more information to come. So we'll just end in a Hail Mary. In the name Father, of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this is the current project that I was talking about. It's just a ribbon that we will write the names of each parishioner down as we pray uh, Hail Mary for each family. Um, so here's every family name. Um, and so if there are multiple of any last name, as there often are, uh, we will include all of the individual ones, of course. Um, and so we'll have every family name from every parish on a ribbon and all of those ribbons will be placed in this um, Immaculate Heart uh, kind of, uh, I'm not sure what you want to call it, um, a little locket um, which will be hung on Mary. Obviously not, um, you know, this is just as a sign of the fact that we remain in Mary's heart. Um, and so this is something that certainly we wish to remind ourselves of, um, especially as we consecrate ourselves and our parishes to Mary.